There's nothing quite like it. That instantaneous split second of history immediately after the anthem. The roar of the crowd. The players are dispersed from center stage. The cannon fire and the balloons, and we are just two minutes or thereabouts away from the first pitch of game one of the 84 World Series. is a leading oil and gas producer. Tenneco is America's most successful shipyard. Tenneco is America's best-selling shock absorber. Tenneco is the world's best-selling backhoe. Tenneco is one of America's largest natural gas pipelines. The Tenneco family, building on quality. was furnished by Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, we draw your attention to the commissioner's box at the outfield end of the Padres' dugout, where the Padres would like to welcome a man who is presiding at his first World Series game, the commissioner of baseball, Mr. Peter Uberon. To make this evening's ceremonial first pitch, the commissioner has selected a great baseball fan to represent the many millions of fans who attended games this summer. This gentleman, Mr. Pat Olson, 83 years young, once roomed with Babe Ruth as a baseball player. This is his 237th World Series game, representing half of all games in World Series history. Accompanying our first ball thrower is San Diego Padres President Ballard Smith. Mr. Olson of College Station, Texas, that first ball, please. Joe, that's a lovely way to start the evening, a former roommate of Babe Ruth, but now it's time to get to the nitty-gritty. Now we get down to it. You're looking at uh, Mark Thurman, 14 and 8, 2.97. If he's on, you're going to see a lot of ground balls. He's a ground ball pitcher. He, if he doesn't get his changeover, he's headed for trouble. They talk about his stuff. He's got below average fastball, a below average curveball, but a way above average change of pace, and that sets up his other two pitches. And if anything else about him that stuck with me was what Terry Kennedy said. He knows himself, and he knows the opposing hitters, and he'll stay within himself. Mark Thurman. He is a pretty decent fielder, and 
and the last two starts he had at the end of the year he had troubles with the ball it kept coming up on him and he was hammered and of course against the Chicago Cubs he had a rough outing however he is in direct contrast to starter Jack Morris where Thurman was five and five at the All-Star break he finished with a rush he won nine and lost only three when it really counted at the break I guess on a scouting report he's got to one tag everybody likes he's a bulldog a real junkyard dog he'll hang in there well he'll be pitching to Lou Whitaker Alan Trammell and Kirk Gibson and look out here he defuse a time bomb when Lou comes up and he has power he's had 40 home runs over the last three years so Whitaker Trammell and Gibson setting the Padres defensively Garvey Wiggins Templeton and Nettles in the outfield Martinez Brown and Gwynn behind the plate Terry Kennedy so history is being made here in San Diego the first World Series ever the plate umpire Doug Harvey Larry Barnett at first Bruce Fremming at second Rich Garcia of the American League at third Paul Rungi of the National League on the left field line Mike Riley of the American League on the right field line so pull up a chair and welcome to game one and here we go the corner and we're underway. Whitaker doesn't run very much although he has good speed. He only stole six bases but they shorten up at third. Nettles is looking on a bunt. Fouled away. You're going to see a lot of running I think on both sides. Uh, Vin uh, for the simple reason that Detroit's going to send a message uh, to Terry Kennedy the catcher to see if he can stop him. And of course Wiggins on the other side is going to say well I heard all about Lance Parrish. See if he can stop me. Oh, we'll see if they can get away with Lou Whitaker with the count 0 and 2. Little slider away, ball one. 1 and 2. Thurman graduated from Texas A&M. He has a degree in finance, which comes in handy as a high-priced ball player these days. <laughs> <laughs> 1 and 2. Hit down the left field line foul. He came in with a fastball, so he challenged him a little bit. He'll challenge him, and his change of pace, he showed him right away. He got it over, and that'll make him feel good, and it'll also set up his other pitches. It'll give Kennedy something behind the plate. You can work with two pitches. It's a definite plus. Well, Sparky feels he has two excellent hitters at the top of the heap in Whitaker and Trammell. And that's foul behind the plate and out of play. Just to set Jack Murphy Stadium in your mind, named after a wonderful man, a columnist here in San Diego out of Oklahoma, Pipe smoker who had so much to do with bringing the Chargers here with the birth of the Padres and the building of this stadium. 327 down the line. Missed with the fastball. And I sure hope that the move to take his name off the stadium flops. I would hate to see that. Imagine a man who wrote a book about his dog, a Labrador named Abe of Spoon River. You get an idea of what kind of a human being Jack Murphy was. Good guy. Fouled away. So Whitaker is up there hacking away. His numbers, he has balanced his books. He walks about as much as he strikes out during the regular year. With Mark Thurman, they'll be counting pitches. Uh, Norm Sherry, the pitching coach, says it's about 90-95 for a complete game. If he gets in the 80s in the sixth inning, he's in trouble. Two balls, two strikes to Lou Whitaker. Fouled away. You know how it sums up the feeling down here when you have Pat Olson throw out their first ball. Remember when Bob Shirley pitched for the Padres, he had a great quote. He said, tradition in St. Louis is Stan Musial. Tradition in San Diego is Nate Colbert coming in the clubhouse and trying to sell you a used car. <laughs> but it's changed. Breaking ball just missed. So he's been throwing breaking balls away and then trying to come inside with the fastball, and he's gone all the way. Textbook example of a leadoff man. Worked to count to three and two and fouled off some pitches. He's made Thurman work, and that's what he's supposed to do. High drive into left center field. Bobby Brown going back. It's over his head. He's on the track, and it's going to bounce against the wall. Whitaker into second base, standing with a long double. Boy, they go after you right away. They come out swinging. Uh, you saw the stat on a home run. Bobby Brown replacing McReynolds. Not quite the outfielder, but I doubt if McReynolds would have been able to make that play. Uh, over his head, two base hit. And these Tigers are, well, they're doing what they did to get here. 
They scored in the first inning against Kansas City in two of the three championship games and then scored in the second inning in the one game where they missed. So they get you early. Sparky was saying Whitaker and Trammell are exceptional hitters. Well, Whitaker's doubled and now he has Trammell. You see, Allen has closed his stance, that left leg, much closer to the plate than it used to be. It has given him more power. You watch him when he gets back in there. What does that tell you if you're the catcher? And he's bunting up along third foul. Well, you have to wait for his stride because what he's doing, he's closed his stance because he was opening up his shoulders uh, much too soon, and he wants to make sure he waits on the ball and kind of hits behind it. Now, if you get inside, he can still open it up. You can see him short enough to beat out the base hit. If he were to stand there and just stride like that, you'd say to yourself, well, this guy's looking for the pitch inside so he can open up quickly and pull it. He led the league in sacrifices last year, so he's a good bunter. Kennedy is a very active catcher. He'll tell you location a lot by watching his body and watch his glove. As you saw there, he motioned down. Thurman has to stay down. He can't pitch up or he'll get killed. Well, Thurman, who made so many pitches, went three and two, and then Whitaker doubled. He's behind two and one to Trammell. Well, he got away with a pitch that was up. And actually, you're pitching right into his kitchen because he is a high ball hitter fastball hitter and Thurman got away with that one two and two just the start of things and he bounced that three feet in front of the plate Kennedy blocking it and Whitaker holding it second I'll never get it into the scoring rules but that to me should be like a, an RBI uh, because the catcher did save a base now Whitaker had some ideas about maybe going on over to third and he sees ah, I waited too long was what the late great Casey Snegel used to call the 55 foot curveball. Well, he went three and two to Whitaker and he comes right back three and two to Trammell. That's not a good sign for a fellow who has to beat you with control. Three and two. All right. First inning has got to be a tough inning for all pitches in the first game of the World Series. I would think that by the second inning you'd be able to settle down if you're still around. He's made a lot of pitches. He's going to need some help. Dick Williams, of course, a very knowledgeable manager who's been through the mill, has won pennants, he actually managed in all divisions, and now, like Sparky, trying to win in the other league. Shot foul outside of third and down the line. He's made 17 pitches already, and you can see the toll that that's going to take, but I just wonder, and I'm sure that Dick Williams and Norm Sherry take it into consideration. He's pumped up. The adrenaline is flowing. I mean, it's not just another game. And uh, I'm sure that uh, he's a little bit stronger right now than, than normal. And they'll take that into consideration. It might be his problem, too. He might be overthrowing because of the adrenaline. Let's see. Three and two. Line in the left field. That's a base hit. Whitaker is to third. And Graham is sending him in to throw to the plate. He's in. And it is one to nothing. Detroit holding at first is Trammell and the Tigers have done it again. They scored in the first inning. They will run on this outfield. Gwynn charges the ball hard, but he's the most aggressive uh, outfielder as we look at the replay. Line drive, left field. Grammas doesn't hesitate. Whitaker, better than average speed. Martinez's throw cut off. No chance in the world. So the pattern continues. You know, Detroit never trailed in any of their three games with Kansas City, while San Diego trailed at one time or another in all five of their games against the Cubs. And they're down one nothing, nobody out, and Kirk Gibson at the plate. Yeah. Right. The big guy that Sparky calls the animal. <laughs> Sparky says he's the kind of a player you could put him in a can, put the lid on top of it, and he'll still score. Most pitchers try to work him the old cliche about going up the ladder. He has a tendency, if he goes after a high first pitch, he'll then follow the next one up and go after the next one. So we'll see if they try and work him up the ladder. 0 oh and 1. You miss, and he'll hit the ladder on the light stand. <laughs> yeah, right. And there goes the runner, the throw to Garvey. Garvey down to Templeton to get him. And that's a big play because Anderson felt, I'm sure, that Garvey does not have the good arm 
time to throw to second base. It's not only a, does he have the good arm, he very rarely throws there, but you can see that the Tigers are off and running immediately. Trammell broke much too soon. Garvey's throw in good shape. Templeton is there, makes the easy tag. It's a big play for many reasons. It sends a message, but also with Gibson up there, he loses the hole between first and second. He's going to drag a bunt, and he left it in Kennedy's mitt. On two. And keep in mind that the Tigers feel that they have to stop Wiggins and Gwynn, and the best way to stop them is to let them play catch-up baseball. And when you lose base runners, it's tough to add numbers to that scoreboard. So we'll see now if this pitch is up around the eyes or whether he's going to go breaking ball away. 0 oh and 2. Breaking ball away, hit into left center, but Martinez is there. As you watch uh, from our center field shot, Kennedy given the uh, signals, and Lance Parrish the same way. In fact, most catchers and. I'd say from the big leagues to the playground, for crying out loud, the last thing they do is the location. You can see that Kennedy won the fastball inside. He uses his little pinky, and here comes the curveball, and you don't ever throw breaking balls inside. So that tells you something. Well, here's a guy with more power than any Tiger has had since Willie Horton back in 68. Lance Parrish. Fastball in there. You can see the indecision that Kennedy wanted that ball inside. Thurman just kept looking at him and shook him off. That's one way that the pitcher will do. He'll shake you off. And Kennedy, as he gives the sign, the last thing is location. One and one. You have to remember with this Detroit ball club, it had the best record on the road in the major leagues. It's not overwhelmed by being in San Diego by any means. Change fouled away. Good pitch. One and two. you joined us a little late Lou Whitaker doubled on a 3 2 pitch Trammell singled on a 3 2 pitch and Whitaker scored against Mark Thurman one and two so he went up around the eyes but Parrish wouldn't bite two and two don't uh, don't that's Morris Jack Morris don't think that he's got all those pitches when you saw Thurman shaking him off if he had that many pitches you have to take your shoes off to get the signs he was just shaking him around two and two little chopper back a third on the line is Nettles a long throw Garvey off the bag and Parrish aboard Nettles from 25 feet back of the bag too much of a throw and Parrish aboard Nettles gets over there in good shape Tries to set himself, but that's a long throw. Parrish got down the line in pretty good shape. It's a base hit. So with two down and Lance Parrish at first, Parrish no running speed. Don't be surprised, though. He may want to send Kennedy a message. If I were Kennedy, I'd be looking for him. Well, Parrish has stolen two and been caught three. Slow dribbler to Nettles, no play. So it's a single for Larry Herndon, and down to second goes Parrish. Is a little unlucky. Back to back singles. That's the fourth hit of the inning. You had Whitaker double, Trammell single, and now two infield jobs. <laughs> They're using the foot gun attack, all right. The grub ones in front of home plate will not sleep. They've been beating down on it. Two base hits, none of them having left the infield. And here's Garbay. Barbaro Garbay, the DH. His numbers during the year. Interesting to point out about the DH every other year. The World Series follows the American rule, but the outcome hasn't followed the American League. In every World Series, when the DH was used, the team with the highest DH average has won every time. Oddly enough, the National League had the highest DH average and won three of four. strike. You have two on. Parrish at second. Herndon at first. One nothing Detroit. Yes, the start of the ballgame. Boy, he's making a lot of pitches. He's making a lot of pitches, but I'm sure Dick Williams and the Padres feel they got the perfect man out there, the bulldog, the junkyard dog, to hang in there because of what's happened. Uh, Whitaker hit the ball hard, Trammell hit the ball hard, but these two base hits can upset you. He's made 30 pitches. Two and one. Yeah. In there. Slider in on the hands, much to the delight of this crowd. Some 
somewhere around 59,000. So Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Runners at first and second, one nothing Detroit. Parrish at second, not particularly fast at all, and Herndon at first. Breaking ball hit foul down the right field line, out of play. And already, here in his first inning, Dick Williams is, I'm sure, thinking that the least little bit of trouble in the fourth, fifth inning, I'm going to bring in my middle relief, which is so strong. He's had great middle relief from uh, Hawkins and Dravecki and Leffert. So with all these pitches, because uh, the, the magic number from Norm Sherry was 80 in the sixth. Two and two the count. Ground ball to Nettles, and he's going to go to the bag and beat Parrish, and the inning is over. So Detroit gets the minimum out of the maximum. They get one run, four hits, and leave two. And at the end of half an inning, the Tigers won, the Padres nothing. This is Randy Jones in downtown San Diego for Light Beer for Miller. And I'm telling you, these Padre fans are really fired up. Hey, anything you fans want to tell those folks down in Detroit? Let's take it down to Norm Cash in Detroit. Look who's entered the personal computer game now. Can I get in on this? Go ahead. Introducing the AT&T Personal Computer for Business. It's fast and flexible, runs most business software, and has a high-resolution screen for superb graphics. In short, everything you need to put your business ahead of the game. Your move. The AT&T Personal Computer. For the dealer nearest you, call 1-800-247-1212. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. We'll see you after graduation. This is great. Thank you. Congratulations. Mark Thurman has to feel he got out of it cheaply enough as he goes up the runway to cool off. One run, four hits. They could have put him away. They could have. He made 33 pitches. Uh, he's up in the clubhouse. He'll be back out. Jack Morris on the mound taking his warm-up tosses. If you're with us, he pitched a no-hitter right on our game of the week. Morris has a very hard slider, good fastball. He's been thrown very hard. If we clocked him against Kansas City at 95-96, he'll throw that split-finger fastball that pitching coach Roger Craig has made so famous, and it'll be awesome at times. His problem to stay within himself and don't get upset. He's a tough competitor. I tell you, a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't get upset. I used to like to see that in the picture. Well, that's the way they think down here in San Diego. You'll see quite a few funny signs throughout the stadium. Jack Morris, however, is all business right now. When he won 19, that's the same number that Bert Blylevin won. But he was the hottest of the pitchers when the Tigers broke out of the barrier and wore 35 and 5. He did a turnabout as you can see. So this year, along with a no-hitter, he's had a three-hitter and a four-hitter, and he can be overwhelming. Jack Morris will be pitching to Alan Wiggins, Tony Gwynn, and Steve Garvey. Ben, I think, while well, we got a chance here, would like to point out that that infield, you heard complaints on both sides. We may see some bad hops and said, in fact, Sparky said, now I can understand why Sandberg didn't come up with the ball and why the ball scooted to Durham. It is an extremely difficult infield, and now Alan Wiggins is getting a standing ovation from a great part of the crowd. And the third baseman has come in very close. Castillo, as close as I've ever seen a third baseman, they're going to challenge Wiggins to bunt. Look at that. He's right on top of him. And Mars, who is quick, starts him, and it's fouled at the plate. Oh, and one. Alan Wiggins, switch hitter, much better hitter from the right side with a little power, but of course, extra steps to the bag. Left side, he just kind of pokes the ball, the opposite field. Oh, and one. One ball, one strike to Wiggs. Maybe the noble experiment paid off and was one reason why the Padres were so successful. They took a big gamble. They 
took Wiggins, an outfielder by trade, converted him to a second baseman. And even though he made a lot of errors, 32, he got the job done. And Jack Morris trying to get him one and one. One and two. Castillo right in on top of him. And I tell you, he's almost saying to him, you can't hit it by me. He moved back just a couple steps. They're shaded way over to left field as if he were a right-handed hitter. If he hits a ball to straightaway center or right center, that's a sizable gap. Fouled away. The Tigers defensively, Darrell Evans and Lou Whitaker, Alan Trammell and Marty Castillo, with Larry Herndon, Chet Lemon, and Kirk Gibson, Lance Parrish behind the plate, and Jack Morris on the hill. This is where you were talking about, Ben. Look at that gap right up the middle. And he's a rabbit. If he ever finds a gap, look out. That's why Jack McKeon drafted him. When you got a truck, replace it with the rabbit. He did. Fly back of first, slicing foul down the line. Evans in pursuit, back in the seats, out of play. Always find that in the first inning of a big ball game, a lot of messages are being sent. I think the Tigers have already sent a message to uh, Terry Kennedy, we're going to run, as you saw Trammell get picked off. When Wiggins came up to hit, Sparky is saying, you're going to have to really make a punt or drag it to get on because Castillo's going to play close. A lot of little things going on here. pitchers Sparky ever had was a talented left-hander named Don Gullett and he says Morris is as quick as Gullett. Ball three. That's a thing that Wiggins can do. He's not afraid to hit with two strikes and like Whitaker he worked the count to three and two and that's the good leadoff man. Three and two. ball blew him away and that'll do it for Wiggins and it will bring up the National League's leading hitter Tony Gwynn. We'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. The courtroom battle between Dow Chemical and Consumers Power gets underway tomorrow. Details after the World Series. One out bottom of the first inning one to nothing Detroit and here is Tony Gwynn who faced Morris in the All-Star game and struck out. And bangs it to right center Gibson gone back on the ball he's there Gibson has become a good outfielder he's worked with Hall of Famer Al Kaline and before the game every game this season and in order to work out yesterday Sparky made a point of it that he comes out here and he works during batting practice and now another ovation for the Padres most valuable player in the LCS Steve Garvey so the two most valuable players in the league championship series are both Spartans from Michigan State. Steve Garvey and Kirk Gibson. Garvey's had a notable fall off in power. But he had his biggest home run of the year against Lee Smith Saturday night. Change. Big balloon. Ball one. That's his squibbed out like he was picking up that bar of soap in the shower. One and all the count to Garvey. Two down in the first inning. Tigers one, Padres nothing. Fastball, line to right. That's a base hit. There was a classic case of hitting a pitch that was really a mistake. Lance Parrish, fastball, moved inside. Morris had good stuff on it, got it out. Garvey extends those arms and hits behind it to the opposite field, much like the home run he hit off Lee Smith. Well, Garvey being saluted vocally and with the signs, and now here is Greg Nettles, 40 from San Diego. And a big guy at Sock, acquired from the Yankees for pitcher Dennis Rasmussen. For years, Nettles was a low ball hitter, but as the years have gone by now, he likes that until he talks about himself as being a high ball hitter. He is a high ball hitter now. One ball, no strike. It was interesting when he was 
was with the Yankees. He bought a TV dish for the backyard so his wife could live in San Diego. After he bought traded to the Padres. One and all. In there. He had a great line when uh, they clinched it. He said, in New York, they tell you to win the pennant. In San Diego, they ask you. <laughs> Two down in the first, one nothing Detroit. Garvey with the base held on at first, and Evans now goes behind him with the left hand hitting nettles up there. One and one. That's that split fingered fastball away, and the bottom dropped out of it too low. Two and one. Most of the times it will be a ball if you can take it, but it takes the kind of discipline that's, that's very hard to come by because the ball looks like a strike coming there. Two and one to Nettles. Garvey doesn't figure to do any running. One reason why Evans is off the bag as well as a left hand hitter. Line in the left center. That's a base hit. Herndon to pick it up. Garvey held at second. Ossie Virgil was holding him all the way. That'll bring up Terry Kennedy. beginning the Tigers had four hits for a run in the top of the first and the Padres now with two out back to back singles as Dick Williams talks to Norm Sherry and Sparky Anderson is alone with his thoughts. Here's Terry Kennedy. Kennedy tried to go the other way a couple of times against Chicago. It didn't work. He got into where he was feeling for the ball. And the Padres are hoping he'll come back with that powerhouse swing of his. was influenced a great deal by an old buddy of yours down here, Clyde McCullough. Well, I think that Clyde helped him with his confidence and kept telling him how good he was and what a great prospect that he is. Line drive down the right field line and going into the bullpen. Garvey will score. Here comes Nettles to the plate, and he scores. Going to third is Kennedy. Two to one, Sandy. My baseball career, I was treated nine times. But wherever I went, one thing was always the same. Everyone drank light beer from Miller. 
In Boston, they said the best thing about light was it's got a third less calories than the regular beer. In L.A., they said the best thing was lights less filling. But I think the best thing is it tastes great right here in New York City. Ken, this isn't New York. Chicago. No. Milwaukee. <laughs> Kansas City? Light beer from Miller. Omaha? Everything you always wanted in a Spokane. beer. And less. Utica? I'm holding an Epson printer. The single largest selling brand of computer printers in the United States today. We're talking state of the art. But are we talking fragile? It's made by Epson. Sensitive? A printer that can't take the grind? This is an Epson. Why do you think so many people are buying an Epson to go with their Apples and IBMs? Tell them. Sunday on Night Rider, there's terror in the streets. There was no accident. As Kid and Michael risk everything to take on the Bonsai Road Racers in a duel to the death. Sunday. Here's a base hit by Kennedy and his Padre ball club to a man. They feel something good will happen. Just wait. It happens early here. They get a break. The ball scoots up. Gibson has to wait for it. Hits the bench. No possible play at the plate. And they answer the one run of Detroit with two of their own. And when you talk to them, as we look at Jack Morris, they say the Padres individually were not too impressive, but collectively were tough. Well, Morris knows he's in for a dogfight. It's two to one San Diego as we go to the second inning. By the way, if you are keeping score, the official score has reversed the field. We first got word it is a triple. Now they have said no double, and Kennedy took third on the throw to the plate. Chet Lemon with the count one ball and no strikes. He came up empty during the LCS, but you might remember he scored the only one in the clincher in game three and the wave has started in San Diego. Two and oh. We'll see it here and of course we'll see it at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. I'll tell you you come to the ballpark now they expect you to work as a fan. You got to clap shout wave. There's a shot to third. Oh what a hot hand by Nettles to throw him out. Nothing new for him. He's ready, anticipating, gets that glove down, almost got it on the bare hand. Once he gets it, though, easy play. The lemon rips it, and it almost got between the wrists and handcuffed him. He just did stay with it. A very hard infield. Keep in mind that it's a very hard infield. In fact, I dropped the base, and when it hit the infield, it came about felt high to me. You know, Bob Verde, the brilliant Chicago columnist, said it is this infield is harder than the New York Times crossword puzzle. <laughs> it's that hard. <laughs> well, here's Darrell Evans. Basically a dead low ball hitter, loves to pull, originally signed by Kansas City back in 1967. 1-0. High towering fly ball down the right field line. Gwynn across the line in the bullpen. Can't make it. He almost had that ball. Yeah, he didn't quit on it. See if he hit his head on the fence. You see him rubbing the left side of his head. Interesting, he was in the wrong bullpen. He would have gotten some help. When the, they won't let you get hurt, but they're not going to say a lot of rumor or anything else. They'll get lockjaw. Watch him go up and see what happens here. He does bump his head yep. as he tries to make the catch. But you're in enemy territory and you're on your own. Open season. One and one, Evans. Ball two, two and one. He made a great catch against the Cubs in that same area. Little dribbler foul on the count two and two. If you joined us a little late, where you been? Well, we really had some going here. It's two to one Padres. We're in the top of the second inning with one out. Mark Thurman touched up for a run and four hits, only to see his club come back with two runs on three hits. Thing about Thurman, Harry 
Dunlop, the coach who I've known it seems like 100 years, says you can ask him about any hitter in the National League, he'll tell you how to pitch him. He knows the hitters, and he knows himself. And knowledge is a great thing. Two and two. Fisted foul. And he can really spot the pitches. Watch Terry Kennedy glove, and he's hit the spot three different times at Evans, and that was his 42nd pitch. Keep track of it because he's going to need some help, it looks like. Two and two to Darrell Evans. Line drive down the line, foul out of play. Evans broke in with this in a great note. A roll to owner, and for good measure, he homered for Detroit's home opener. He hit the first home run of Bob Gibson, who holds a World Series mark. Two and two. Way outside. Great sports family. His mother and aunt, professional softball players. His grandfather was a minor league baseball player. And if he gets in the slump, he can go home and get help. And you know, first Braves, Aaron. He was the first Giants in half of me. That tells you a lot about him. Fouled away. Of course, he got a lot of publicity. Remember, he lives in Pleasanton, California. As we look at Mark Thurman, Darrell Evans and his wife claim that they saw a UFO in the backyard. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it wasn't saying go home, E.T. Three, two. Intercept. Get up and go. See the look in his eyes, the appreciative look at the fans' reaction. I think the ball players don't hear you if there's 2,000 in the stands. You know they hear you when there are this many. Here's Marty Castillo, a catcher, third baseman, ball one. You remember, in the third game against the Royals, he beat out what looked like a double play ball, allowing the only run in the game to score. That's in there. That wiggle is that Kennedy is giving. Most catchers will use that sign for the specialty pitch, be it the change of pace, the screwball, or the, the off brand pitch. One and one. Ball two. two. We have two out, top of the second inning. Padres two, Tigers one. There it is. Two strikes, two out. Fisted foul off to the right, back into the crowd, out of play. And boy, they are here, somewhere around 58, 59,000 at Jack Murphy Stadium, which opened up in April of 1968, before the Padres were born. Cleveland and the San Francisco Giants played an exhibition game here. Two and two. Behind the play, Kennedy coming to the screen, no play. Watching Kennedy and Thurman work and Kennedy giving his signs, you saw him put down the one and then go to the pinky as if he wanted outside, shook him off, pointed inside, said yes. It points out that the catcher can merely suggest the pitch, the final decision. He has the ball. You can suggest the pitch in a location, but he has to okay it. It's side fastball. Two and two. Fly into shallow center. Out goes Templeton and Wiggins. It is the center fielder, Bobby Brown, who hollered Templeton off the ball. So a somewhat downcast Jack Morris, ready to go back to work. Captain Nick Nicolari from Stanford, Connecticut. This is the 50th World Series at which a Goodyear blimp has appeared. Looking down on a great city, San Diego, the eighth city in the United States, just a tad behind Dallas. And here is Carmelo Martinez. Oh, and one. You mentioned
mentioned Clyde McCullough earlier. Martinez was rookie of the year for the Padres and he received the Clyde McCullough Award. Jack McKeon, general manager, he's the one who came up with the idea. On one. Ground ball to the hole, deep in the hole. Let's see Trammell's arm. And he made the play. Allen, of course, ever since she tripped playing Frankenstein in Halloween, hurt his arm. And it's interesting to see him make this play. Yesterday he said, oh, that's just talk. He said, I, I have been letting up a little bit, but when I have to make the throw, I can. And he certainly proved it there. Watch how he sets himself. In fact, Steve Boris, a good baseball man, former manager of Oakland, says if I was going to do a film on how to play shortstop and show basics, I'd use Trammell as my blueprint. Well, here's Templeton, a switch hitter, going left-handed, ball one, one and oh. Gary Templeton in 1979 was as good a shortstop, I think, as ever played the game when he was with the Cardinals. He was incredible. Good a player. Oh. One and one. 1979, first switch hitter to collect 100 hits, both right and left hand in the same season. It tells you something about his ability. Got to be the best eighth place hitter in baseball. Without a doubt. One ball, one strike. Two. Templeton plagued by bad knees. However, he claims his wheels are okay now. He's a very aggressive player with a great arm. One ball, two strikes. Got him. So Jack Morris, who opened up striking out Wiggins, picks up his second at the expense of Templeton. Out the strike zone with two strikes, you're not going to be that choosy. He's trying to swing down, but you see he's swinging up on that one, misses it, and it's a strikeout. Kurt Bavakwa coming up. Bavakwa is the DH. There was some question whether it would be the left hand hitting champ Summers. However, Dick Williams has gone with Bavakwa. did some DHing when he was in the American League. Pretty tough to be an important role as a DH when you've had only 80 at bats all year. That's all the work Kurt has had. Two to one, San Diego, bottom of the second inning. Hitable. That was the split finger fastball. You could just see it drop right straight down. And the chicken is here, along with about 59,000 others. Ted Giannullis. One and one to count to Kurt. Hard slider. Two and one to count. The players with World Series experience, Goose Gossett, Steve Garvey, Greg the fourth largest in stadium history. The other three were the league championship series games. 57,908. Two and one. Hit down the right field line, slicing foul and out of play. I guess it's only natural. You always look at your position, but I used the word blueprint a moment ago. If you were going to build a catcher, well, you sure could use Lance Parrish for plans. And if he didn't want to catch, I'd let him. <laughs> Whatever he wants to do. Whatever he... And he's mobile back there. He moves behind the plate. He likes to set up with his body, but the glove is the target. And as you can see, a pretty good politician visiting with Doug Harvey. That's one of the things you like to do is catch, and you get to visit like that. And Harvey lives in San Diego, so he's probably doing a little missionary work. That's probably what he's doing. Yeah. Two and two to Kurt Bavacqua with two out. Second inning, two to one, San Diego. second inning and at the end of two it is two to one Padre. We'll be back after these messages from your local station.
Here is the split-fingered fastball by Morris, and look at the rotation. It comes out tumbling, to use Roger Craig's words. But if you noticed on the grip when he we had it back behind his ear, how the index finger, how far down on the ball it was, and the thumb, that's where you manipulate it. It's what Roger Craig teaches. He said you get the ball, close your fingers, your middle finger, index finger, and then keep opening and spreading and spreading until it feels comfortable, and think fastball. It's the arm speed that's important. Well, here's Lou Whitaker. Little chin music, ball one. Nettles playing him in on the grass. You remember Whitaker went three and two and was up there forever, it seemed, before doubling over the head of center fielder Bobby Brown. Breaking ball missed. I remember Branch Rickey used to teach young ball players. He'd put a baseball with a rod through it, and it spun like a gyroscope. And if it was a fastball, you'd see the seams only. And if it was a breaking ball, you'd see a lot of the white of the ball. Found away. Well, hitting, that's what you pick up. You pick up the rotation, and that's why the split-finger fastball is so difficult because it tumbles at you, and you saw it with a great shot that we had. And the arm speed as a batter, you're picking that up, and the arm speed is that of the fastball. Even if you don't throw a good split-fingered one, it's still a good straight change. Two and one. And that's a little high, ball three. Well, for that split second there, as we saw the seams, I felt like Ted Williams must have felt when he could see the ball that well. That's hard to believe that you could see a ball that well as well as we saw that one. Three and one to count to Lou Whitaker. Third inning, two to one, Padre. High fly ball. And over in left field, Carmelo Martinez waving Brown away. A magnificent evening in San Diego. Tonight's game is brought to you by RCA, creators of video technology that excites the senses. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Well, we have one out in the third inning, and Alan Trammell, the batter. Trammell singled in the first inning to drive in Lou Whitaker. Ball one. If you weren't with us, Mark Thurman had Whitaker double, Trammell single him in. And with one out, Parrish and Herndon singled. But the Tigers managed only one. A little breaking ball, one and one. Fastball hit through and into left field for the base hit. So Nettles had shortened up looking bunt and Trammell found the hole on the left side. Allen is now two for two. That is hit number five off Thurman. Trammell is a magnificent hitter. In fact, he hits 300 almost every possible way. 320 against left-handers, 310 against right-handers, 318 at night, 304 at daytime, 304 at home, 322 on the road. <laughs> He's hit the numbers except when he plays the numbers. <laughs> Consistency, thou art a jewel, thou art a trammel. And here is Kirk Gibson, who flied to left field in the first inning. Worked in under the hand, so Thurman is not afraid to come in on the hitters. But he's allowed five hits in two and a third inning. You, you, you hear expressions like he's gutty, not afraid. He'll challenge you when they talk about Thurman. One and oh, and again in on the knuckles, ball two. Trammell could run. He's got 19 stolen bases, but Gibson up there with a Garvey on the bag. And it's a question of whether they're going to test Kennedy, that message you were That's talking it. about earlier. That's the only reason, because uh, right now you'd want Gibson to take a good whack. Kennedy looking for some help from the bench because he's screened by the left-handed hitter. Trammell at first, one away in the third, two to one San Diego. Trammell not going, and there's another one in at the hands, and he's falling behind three and oh. I asked about hitting three and oh, and Sparky himself says there are a couple guys I let ha happen, Parrish and Gibson. Gibson is the best. He's better disciplined. A lot of times you let Parrish hit three and oh just to make him swing the bat, but Gibson, he'll turn him loose sometimes. He hit 27 during the year, and there's a high strike. He's a dead low ball hitter, so Thurman is trying to keep the ball up, and he doesn't want him to extend his arms, but he's missed three times in at the hands. 
So Gibson really giving Grammis a good look. He's hitting all the way, but he just wants to know if Trammell is running. Well, Gibson has struck out over 100 times. We'll see if that takes off the run and hit. Trammell is not going. That's why. Anytime you get a man who strikes out over 100 times, it's pretty dangerous to play run and hit or hit and run. He's a tough man to double up because he's got great speed, but the, you can see both the hitter and the runner checking. You can see those eyes darting back and forth. Well, where you figured he was going to get breaking ball three and one, we'll see if he gets fastball three and two, and if Trammell goes. He is going, and the fastball got him, and the throw to Templeton is too late to get Trammell. Templeton made a good tag because where he took that ball, he really cut down the, the distance, and Kennedy gets rid of it in good shape. I thought he had good balance, did everything right except get the man. Look where he makes the tag, and he's in front of it, but Trammell is in there. Had the throw been down near the bag or even on the second base side, he might have had it. It almost had to be one of those perfect throws. A pitcher to get rid of that ball, it's got to be about 1.4. A catcher's got to be about maybe 1.8. The, the total thing, if you can get down in 3.6, you can see Trammell looking at the hitter. It was not a straight steal. Ball looks like he gets there with that angle. But Trammell was there, framing a good call. So they played run and hit where the batter is not obligated to swing at ball four and Gibson strikes out but they get away with it and that's in at the hand. So Thurman trying to keep these big hitters from extending. And boy you got a big hitter here Lance Parrish. Parrish had 33 home runs as befits a weightlifter although a lot of people tell you you shouldn't be lifting weights if you're trying to be a baseball player. They don't know what they're talking about. Two and oh. Properly trained athlete of today is better trained than any time in, the, in my time. I mean, it used to be that guys went to spring training to lose weight. These guys, now they train, and they train properly. And I'm sure Dick Williams, along with Norm Sherry there, are taskmasters. The 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball missed. Boy, Thurman has had four three and two counts. Trammell is at second with two out in the third inning. He needs a couple one, two, three innings is what he needs. Swing three and oh. He's got enough power to do it. And it's ball four. So Mark Thurman growing older by the minute, but no one throwing in the bullpen. He's making a lot of pitches. Sparky trying to get him. And Larry Herndon will be coming up. Williams showing a great deal of patience. The middleman, as Joe mentioned earlier, Hawkins, along with Drevecki and Leffords. They'll play a very important role, I would think, in this game tonight. 71. What do you say about 80? He's almost there. Norm Sherry talked that was a magic number. He's almost there in the third inning. He was talking in the sixth inning. And he missed ball one. So he's pitching uphill and Kennedy going out to talk to him. And that's the thing that Kennedy has done this year. He didn't do it. Here comes Norm Sherry to come out and talk to him now. And it's really a case to stay within yourself, relax. Can't make a whole lot of mechanical changes right out there because if you haven't got your act together when you're out there, it's just too late. One of the interesting little stories of a little box on the World Series, the fact that Dick Williams and Sparky Anderson were teammates for the Fort Worth Cats in the Dodger organization. Another member of that team at Fort Worth was Norm Sherry. On the other side, Roger Craig, the pitching coach for Detroit, was the first manager of the San Diego Padres to have a Padre team finish above 500. That was in 1978. So there's a lot of homecoming feeling here. Roger said that he, when he was managing here, he said, I promised the San Diego fans a World Series. And here it is. Yeah, right. All right, one ball and no strikes to Larry Herndon. Lance Parrish at first, Alan Trammell at second, two down, third inning, two to one, San Diego. Big chopper to Nettles. He'll short hop and go to the bag. San Diego as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Two to one Padre. Watch the grip as we give you this uh, slow ball. 
Jack Morris, we showed you the split finger. Now look at look how his fingers are very close together and the way he's got a grip with the seam. That is looks like the slider. It is. Look at the rotation. That is amazing. I can't believe Williams saw that. I don't ever believe those big hitters. Killer Bruce said the way to hit a knuckleball is see the seams and hit between the seams. <laughs> Niels you said you hit a spitball on the dry side. How are you gonna believe those guys? Well, Mark Thurman has had a lot of pitches hit, but he's only allowed one run, five hits, and he's leading two to one. Morris pitching to Wiggins, and Castillo is almost inside his uniform. They're trying to take that fun away from Wiggins. They're going to have to hit it right down his throat at third base. He is way in on him. Wiggins struck out in the first inning. One and one. One thing about Wiggins, during the year we've noticed it when he bunts left handed it almost looks as if he's sacrificing he tips off his bunt very early most times one and one Bow back Deacon Jones the hitting coach one of the top priorities next spring when they go to Yuma is for him to bunt at least twice in every game drag bunt bunt because they saw what he what he does by almost sacrificing if he would really learn to drag look out there are some people who feel as Morris looks in at him that Wiggins is the fastest man in baseball he stole 120 bases one year a bouncer up the middle behind the bag is trammel to knock it down base hit and now you're going to see an interesting thing this is the guy they have to stop Anderson think that Morris has good enough control and Roger Craig calls the uh, pitch outs ball comes right back Morris can't get it tries Roger Craig calls the pitch outs and I'd be willing to bet right now he'd call one look at nice. even though he knocks that down could not have made the play so it's a base hit for Wiggins and here's Tony Gwynn Tony Gwynn this year when Wiggins reached first so that the first baseman is on the bag all he did was hit 411 you want to talk about taking advantage of the hole on the right side and he has that opportunity now and a lot of fastballs with Wiggins on first well look at those eyes of Wiggins riveted on Jack Mars that was a great shot he wants to go if he can get any kind of a jump he's going to go two to one Padres bottom of the third just the start of things. Not going. They pitch out. You were right. Now I can get excited about this. I would ask the manager before the game, give me the right to call a pitch out again. A double pitch out. I won't bet the house, but he's going to go. All right. One ball and no strikes. And by the way, Morris has not walked a batter, so he's had good control if you want to take another pitch away from him on a pitch out pretty close he was quick and going over there Morris in fact thought he had him and first base umpire Larry Barnett said no well I tell you it's it's uh, it's really a great luxury when the manager says go ahead take it if you feel that strongly but the pitcher can't get upset if he doesn't go although this is a good move very close great way great throw low where he just had to drop the glove Wiggins not giving him anything to tag as he went back with the hand. Look at Lance Parrish looking over at the bench. He wants it. He wants that pitch out. One ball and no strikes. Got it. There it is. The second pitch out in a row. And Wiggins wasn't going. You don't yeah. see that too often. You've got some cat and mouse game going here now. Now they got Parrish in a box. Will he go for three? This is one of the few games that a pitch out has become exciting. <laughs> well, we see now at the league's league hitting against a 19-game winner, Jack Morris. Wiggins at first, nobody out. Two balls and no strikes to Tony Gwynn. Castillo on the edge. Anderson has already let his catcher call two pitch outs to no avail. Two and oh. George is working that tobacco. Ball three, and Morris is so busy looking at Wiggins, he is losing the battle, plus the pitch outs 
to Tony Gwynn. Well, that's where the pitcher's got to pick you up. He can't let those pitch outs that didn't work affect him. He's got to come back and pick you up. The good ball clubs all have an eraser. You got to have somebody to erase that mistake. Three and zero. because we talked about it but he has hit into so many DPs you wondered about that they had him rip away because he's been so hot and he bangs into the double play despite the run is going and so Greg Nettles who's single to left coming up Alan Wiggins at third two out two to one San Diego marvelous play by Lou Whitaker Morris eyeballing Wiggins as he comes down the line from third You wouldn't expect any shenanigans with a left-hand hitter up there because the door is wide open. Uh, we'll watch Wiggins nevertheless. Steve Garvey, one of the few times in the last week that he has not come up with some big play. Oh, and one. And Wiggins bluffs down the line. see Wiggins as the catcher so you got it wide open as you pointed out then and you make it up with your pitcher and if he starts down the line give me the fastball out of way out of the box because if Nettles would try to swing it be interference and as big as Parrish is it'd be like sliding into a handball court. Wiggins stole home against the Dodgers twice this year on game of the week. Ball two. see whether Dick Williams wants to turn his rabbit loose. He had both of them going with Garvey up there. 
two to one Padres third inning Wiggins at third and Morris working from a windup. Castillo is deep as you see he's not trying to bird dog. Three and one. You know an interesting thing about Jack Morris with a runner at third he has to worry about a wild pitch and that has really hurt him this year. Morris made 14 wild pitches most in the American League so Jack has something extra to concern him three and one. That's a strike. He led the American League in wild pitches last year. Here's a pitch where he should just concentrate on throwing a strike. Whatever the catcher calls for because Wiggins is not coming if he comes to a strike and he's over three and two two out. And thanks to Wiggins Nettles walks. So Jack has walked his second man. And the batter will be Terry Kennedy. Jumped on the first pitch and pull it to right. Darrell Evans has walked over and he's walking back now. Said to Mars, I'm going to be behind Nettles. They try to pitch Kennedy inside. Doesn't like the ball in. So Wiggins at third, Nettles at first, and not holding him. Two out. Two to one, Padres, bottom of the third. Off speed. Ball one. You can see Evans trying to guard the territory and Wiggins taking a stroll in the park. One and all. I'll tell you one thing, Wiggins is making life miserable for Jack Morris. He is coming about almost a third of the way and since Morris is pitching out of a stretch. He's looking at him just before releasing the ball, and he's behind two and zero. Oh. Padres two runs, four hits. Tigers one run, five hits. Two and zero oh to Kennedy. A strike. Fastball picked up the outside corner. Two and one. With that high shot, you can really see the lead that Wiggins is getting and the concentration of how Morris has to watch him. Foul tipped. Two and two. I'll tell you one thing if you're Wiggins, that's some roadblock down there at home plate. Oh. You got to think twice, uh, man. If you're Wiggins, wait, and you look down and see Lance Parrish, that's a whole new ball game. Sam Nairn used to say, "Tougher than nine miles of detour." Wiggins weighs about 160. Two and two, and that slice to left center, but Lemon got a jump. He's there to handle it. Night has fallen, and it's much easier for the outfielders to pick up the ball. But Jack Morris bobs and weaves out of the third, and at the end of three, the Padres two runs, four hits. Tigers one run, five hits. Sum up the fact that all the networks are doing everything possible to bring you better pictures, to fill the story out so much better, and this has become a great part of it. That shot right there, I guarantee you the TV fans saw it better than Terry Kennedy, who was the batter. You bet. Barbaro Garvey slashes one to first base and Garvey walks it over one away. The so Garvey first ball hitting which is a little surprising or is it in other words here's a kid who has made 70 some odd pitches Do you think Sparky would say make him work a little bit just to knock him off completely. Well he's got pretty good control that's the one factor that's going for him he needs a one two three inning he needs it desperately. Well he's got Chet Lemon. Lemon always makes it tough because he'll take one for the club in fact he's been hit by pitches more than a hundred times and if you're slightly inside off the plate. Chet goes to first. Off speed. Got it over.
interestingly enough, Chad Lemon hit over 150 points higher against left-handers than against right-handers, so he's happy to see Thurman. Boy, he got a scare, didn't he, when he lost oh. that fly ball, and that luckily he flipped the glasses up, so the ball hit his face and not the glasses. to hold on as Templeton is the cutoff man. Remember, Carmelo Martinez is a first baseman converted to left field. And that was the 80th pitch, and we have come now to present the bill. He just didn't get to the ball. He was in no man's land and gets by him two base hit. They haven't Aaron. given us any official mark yet. I'd have to give him an air. Well, he didn't get a glove on it. Yeah, I think he should have. Should have been it. caught. Yeah. I think it's majority rules in World Series as far as three sports riders, and it will be an error. Charge to Carmelo Martinez. And that's fisted off third foul. Nettles had trouble picking it off for a split second, but it's well back into the crowd anyway. So Lemon representing the tying run at second as Terry Kennedy goes back to work. And the bullpen remains quiet. Padres leading two to one in the fourth. Evans followed by Marty Castillo. Remember, Darrell lost a base hit on a diving, smothering stop by Alan Wiggins back in the second inning. swings a bat that's a question for me talking to a catcher Do you ever get the indication about a hitter's strength the way he pumps the bat when well, way he weighs it uh, there's an old wives tale about it well too that when he takes those practice swings the last swing that he takes is where he really wants the ball ah you believe that no ah. I don't ever believe a ball player well he's a low ball hitter He's keeping that bat high now. Two and one. Half swing, foul tip, strike two. Evans hit 16 home runs this year, but only one of them against a the left hand. Lemon at second, one out, fourth inning, two to one, Padre. Just notice if Lemon were hitting that way, he might get chewed out by the umpire. See the glove hanging out of his back pocket? <laughs> See it? Yeah. Two and two. Ball three. You remember what happened in Cleveland? Yeah, Mel Hall had a couple of them in there. He, he liked to have them in the back pocket, so when he had a home run and he circled the bases, he was waving bye-bye to the other players. That's uh, baseball's answer to a tailgate. <laughs> well, three. Got to win friends and get knocked down the next time up. Three and two to Darrell Evan. Breaking ball rolled down to second. Wiggins waiting for Garvey, who almost went after it. And Lemon advances to third. So two out. The tying run is 90 feet away. And Marty Castillo, the batter. Castillo flied to center in the second inning. That second inning is the only inning in which the side was retired for each side. If there were less than two out, it would be a thought. Castillo is an excellent bunter. But of course, with two out, they're not going to try and squeeze. But if we get some time during this series with a runner at third and less than two, we might start thinking about Marty trying to lay one down. In there. One and one. Mark Thurman pitched 
watching his typical game, if you saw him on the sidelines, he might not impress you that much, but on the mound, the expression bulldog really fits him. He's been hanging tough. Thurman working on Marty Castillo with the tying run at third and two out. Lemon on that windup came down the line trying to take a page out of Alan Wiggins' book and give Thurman the bad time. And look at the cash register. He's going into the red. Watch Lemon now and look at Thurman. There you saw the determination. You can really see him almost bite down on that jaw. One and two. In the dirt, a great block by Kennedy or the run is home. Yes, sir. Good play by Kennedy. You really see him get that big body there, and that size really pays off. Watch how he gets in front of it. It's on the outside part of the plate. He wants it down. Don't have to catch that ball. You have to keep it in front of you. And you practice that play. I tell you, you feel like an idiot when you're practicing it. Guy bouncing the ball off your chest, and you go home at night and tell your wife what you did all day. Had a guy bouncing baseballs off my chest. 90th pitch, and nobody warming up. Ball three. We mentioned Lance Parrish behind the plate as you look at the San Diego bullpen idling away the evening. But Thurman is pitching to a big catcher because Terry Kennedy is 6'4 and 220. So there's another roadblock. With Lemon down the line from third, three and two to Marty Castillo. Ball four. There'll be some stern now, I bet you. Thurman lives by control. He has walked two men thus far, and Dick Williams telling Norm Sherry to ring up the bullpen. Thurman's high is only four walks in a game. In fact, the last two-thirds of the year, he has averaged only two walks every nine innings. So you know he is really off his speed, and Williams has sent Sherry out to the mound. Dave Dravecki is moving around down in the San Diego bullpen, and Dravecki will have company. Andy Hawkins will join Dravecki in the bullpen. Say that middle bullpen for the San Diego Padres has really been something. Hawkins uh, had a little stretch there where he lost a little bit of his confidence, came back in, uh, in the championship series and did a sensational job, and he's right on top of his game. Dravecki's been super, and so has been Leopards, and then they set it up for the goose when he comes in. Well, Thurman has allowed five hits. He has walked two batters. He struck out Gibson. That's his only strikeout of the night. And he has Castillo at first and Lemon at third. Two down in the batter, Lou Whitaker. Be careful of his first pitch. Breaking ball, one and all. Whitaker doubled over Bobby Brown's head and flied to left in the third inning. Scored a run. See, Nettles gesturing with his thumb had something to say about Lemon, maybe to the degree forget about it. Don't worry about him and get the ball over. He's not going to steal, and we can't make a play if you walk people. 1 0. Oh. High drive in the right center field, but it's playable, and Bobby Brown is there. Magnificent night, crystal clear, and an unexpected spectator, Mr. Moon, and our Goodyear blimp. A lot going on down below. It is two to one, San Diego in the fourth. Brown, Martinez, and Templeton. And I certainly want to say something about Mr. Jack Morris after that last inning, the double pitch out. I've known pitchers who would just blow their cool and say, "How are you going to win a game if he's got you behind all the hitters?" He didn't work out for him, but he stayed with it and he pitched out and he didn't score. I tell you, we got a sound ball game going. A lot of things. All right, here's Bobby Brown. Drag bunt in the air. Caught by Morris. I love Brown's remark. Did you read that in the paper? He said, I'm the same guy. That's why I've been released three times. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't changed at all. No. One away. The batter 
Now Carmelo Martinez, who was embarrassed by Lemon's drive that he never touched, but he got away with it. Martinez grounded a short in the second inning. And he'll be followed by Gary Templeton. Tiger scored in the first. The Padres came back with two, and that's it up to here in the fourth. A bunt up along third, and Castillo will let it roll foul. Good play by Marty. And he dared go after it. Martinez had the play beaten. He had a good pitch to bunt. It was a high curveball. Looked like it was going to stay fair until it hit the grass, and then it just zoomed out. I don't think they've tailored it any particular way. Just happened to hit the grass and make a left turn. Tailoring reminds me, we're talking about the infield, and they've done everything possible to try and manicure it, and you can see the ball kicking off foul. They even brought in Bill Wilson from the Rose Bowl to try and help out here. 0 and 1 the count. Line drive down the left field line, foul. 0 and 2. That's the one thing that they want this youngster to get is more aggressive up there. He's, he's bent over. Sometimes he gets a little bit too low. And Deacon Jones, the batting coach, says sometimes he's up there like he's waiting for a ball to be placed on a tee. He's got to widen that zone and start hacking because he's got good power. 0-2 oh, to Carmelo. Here's the reputation of being the best fly ball hitter on the club. In other words, picking a man up from third. That'll straighten him up. There are those who look at him and think of the baby bull, Orlando Cepeda, when he was a rookie. Do you know when you used to be the best fly ball hitter on the team, they released you? Yeah, well, now they're <laughs> talking about getting the guy home for the third. One and two. He comes up empty. So Jack Morris settling down now. Remember in the first inning, two singles and a double. Again, now the arm speed is deceiving. You throw it like a fastball, but because of the grip, and look at those seams. Roger Craig says tumbling, and brother, that's what it does. It tumbles. That's a third strikeout for Jack, and here is Gary Templeton. A bouncer up the middle, but Trammell was playing him over near the bag, and Allen throws him out. So Jack Morris sets him down in order for the second time in four innings. And at the end of four, Padres two, Tigers one. We'll be back after these messages from your local state. Tonight's game is brought to you by Shearson Lehman American Express. Shearson Lehman American Express and the serious investor. Minds over money. And by Sharp Electronics Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. The Padres leading the Tigers 2-1 to one as you look through a veil of light. Now, look at that face, huh? <laughs> he looks like the youngster who was at the plate on the pregame right. show about 19-3. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was a great face, wasn't it? Oh, wow. Right off a 4 H poster. Here's another one. Alan Trammell. Twice single to left. He'll be followed by Kirk Gibson and then Lance Paris. He's from nearby Garden Grove. As far as Allen is concerned, he's just about home. 0 and 1. Line to right field, coming in and over as Gwen fades to haul it in. Tony Gwynn was a marvelous basketball player, so. The day that the Padres drafted him, the San Diego Clippers drafted him the same time. And he needed a lot of work because he played so much basketball. He didn't begin to play baseball till April, which is unheard of in Southern California. <laughs> Bobby Tolan is the fellow who worked hard with him, both teaching him to hit and to field. Here's Gibson. Fly to left, struck out. Ball one. One San Diego, one out in the fifth. Two and zero. Oh. Reminder: Later on, NBC Light Beer Award, the Player of the Game. Be a tough decision right now. Two and zero. Oh. Down in the Detroit bullpen, Dave Roseman is throwing. Thurmond, who's been in a lot of trouble with the first bullpen action now, is Roseman. Two to one, San Diego. One out, fifth inning. Little slider in there. What a he's pitch just that one. Oh, he's just made. 
made two great pitches, a fastball on the outside corner and then the breaking ball. So he has evened it up with Gibson, two balls and two strikes. Look at where he is. Coming up 100 pitches, and he's only halfway home. But keep in mind, it's the first game of the World Series. The how adrenaline. Can, how can your arm hurt? Yeah. How can you get tired? Two and two. He wouldn't chase it. They figured that Gibson would go after that bad ball up, and he refused to do it that time. There's a lot of talent. The first Tiger ever to hit at least 20 home runs and steal 20 bases. For a big man, he's remarkably fast. Three and two. And he laid off that pitch that's up again. So Gibson walks, and with one out in the fifth inning, Lance Parrish will be the hitter, and that's the third walk given up by Mark Thurman. And they'll move around again in the San Diego pen. So in the fourth inning, the tying run reached third, and with one out in the fifth inning, the tying run is at first, and Drovecki and Hawkins are back in business under the eyes of Harry Dunlop. You go back a ways with Harry, who's standing on the foul line. Yes, I do. I go back to Pittsburgh days. He broke in as a rookie, and he was 32 years in this game, and he was so happy about having a chance to be in the World Series. He kept telling the young fellas, hey, just enjoy it. Enjoy it, because sometimes it doesn't come around. Well, there's two fellas not enjoying things right now, Norm Sherry and Dick Williams. Fisted foul out of play. You have to watch Gibson. He has 29 stolen bases this year. Much like we talked about Garvey uh, with one out here, Parrish is a double play man. They might start him even though he is the power hitter. The double play, of course, is the inning wrecker, and you want to stay away from that. That looks like an alumni meeting of Michigan State over there at first. Oh, and one. You saw Gibson kind of give Trzuski a glance to first base coach. He does confirm the sign. He does not give the sign, but he'll confirm it. and one strike as we look at Gibson leading away from first one and one you know I was asking uh, Alex Grammis about signs he said we don't even have an answer from a hitter when we have a squeeze play on and I was really surprised about that Did you always have the hitter answer back yeah I've got the squeeze sign always uh, he said they don't one and one to count the lands pass they've got Gibson picked off Darby to Templeton didn't come in here shooting a scared stick. I mean, oh. you've got to be on your toes. One and two to Lance. Two and two. The Detroit Tigers. Only the fourth team in baseball history to go wire to wire. I mean, they're up there in the high rent district. 27 Yankees, 23 Giants, and 55 Brooklyn Dodgers. Two and two to Lance. Just off the corner. Three and two. For a fellow who struck out 120 times, that showed a little bit of discipline taking that pitch. He's a good player, Lance Parrish. Mm. Three and two. 
shot inside third and down the line. Nettles never had a chance. The ball wedging underneath the bunting. And so into second base with the ball dead goes Parrish with a ground rule double. And of course, what would have happened if Gibson were aboard and he made second base? Nettles had no chance. The ball was inside, and watch Parrish. He really gets around on that ball, opens up, and it's by Nettles before he knows what hit him. So two runs, four hits for San Diego. One run, six hits for the Padres. And Larry Herndon coming up. So Parrish, bidding for a perfect night, had an infield single, walked, and now doubled. And there's Kirk Gibson thinking about what might have been. Here's Larry Herndon. He had an infield single, hit into a force play at third in the third inning. Thurman is doing a high wire act in a windstorm out there. You wonder if he can possibly even make it halfway across, never mind going all the way. He's been in constant trouble. Herndon against Kansas City had a home run against left-hander Bud Black. One and one. The pitch that he's been able to Again, Herndon to swing at and although he has the one base hit, an infield hit, not really drive, it's been that off-speed pitch, and he's been able to keep it down and away. He's shown him two fastballs, but his out pitch has been the off-speed. And by the way, Rosma is still throwing down in the Detroit 10. Change, and he missed with that. That was the one he wanted right there. Well, Thurman, with Parrish at second, two out, fifth inning, Padres leading two to one. Lance does not have good running speed. Off the corner again. The bullpen has indicated that they're ready. If he loses him, I'm sure he'll make the move. How many pitches now? He's uh, gone way out of eleven. Oh, uh, Williams knows he's not only on thin ice, one leg is broken through. Three and one to Herndon. Trying to pick up Parrish and get the Tigers even. Drive to right field. Gwynn going back to the track at the wall. Gone. And there's the home run by Larry Herndon to put the Tigers in front three to two. And I guess Thurman, the old story, he pitched a one more batter. Too many. Three balls and one strike to count. And that's the, the two nothing. The, the two balls and one strike, three and one. Those are the cripple shooting counts, and that's the one that gets you in trouble. You can look for a pitch and get your whack, and that's what Herndon did. He drove it to the opposite field, and he drove it a long way. Boy, you got those arms out there. He really snapped after it. And he knew when he hit it, you could see those eyes looking straight up. And he watches it, and so does Gwynn, and so do the Padres. Herndon had a poor beginning. He had one ball to the track in April and May, did not hit a home run in either month. But then after the All-Star break, he did very well. And as he gets some high fives all around, he's put the Tigers in front. Line foul down the left field line. The back came apart. So Barbara Garbay will have to get another. Look at that. <laughs> that came unlaminated. Toothpick factory. Whew. It's like a runaway propeller. Watch this thing go. Didn't look like he hit it on the handle either. How many runs you let in so far up? Three two Detroit. When the Padres hit in the bottom of the fifth, they'll have Bavacqua, Wiggins, and Gwynn. But a big home run by Larry Herndon. One and one. Half swing, cost him a strike. One and two. So Herndon, who had 20 home runs last year and only seven this year, has come up with a big one tonight. Chet Lemon on deck. Fouled away. Hawkins and Dravecki are in the San Diego bullpen. in the game. The Lions and the Tigers a big banner downstairs. Well, the bullpen is ready if they want them. Oh, off speed 
got him. Garvey way out in front of it, but the damage is done. A double and a home run by Herndon. That gives Detroit two. And at the end of four and a half, three to two in favor of the Tigers. Had an easy inning. Not only making all those pitches, he has made at least 20 pitches in every inning. And the crowd is now making its pitch. Detroit three, Padres two, bottom of the fifth inning. Bavacqua, Wiggins, and Gwynn. Rosma is still throwing. I don't know whether Jack Morris told Roger Craig to keep an eye on him. And now Beringer is down there, so perhaps they're each just taking a turn getting in a little work. What a contrast to Thurman. This is a big inning for Morris because this is a there's an old saying in baseball, don't give up a run until you get one, which sounds very simple. Also, don't let them score after you've taken the lead. I mean, it's the unanswered and answered thing that we find in sports these days. You don't want your runs to be answered, and, and Morris has got to hold them here. Well, the crowd is doing its part. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Bavacqua. Fouled away. By the way, a lot of folks have called in over the initials the sleeves of the San Diego player. We'll show you it in a moment. The letters R-A-K in memory of the former owner of the Padres, Ray Albert Kroc. Foul back. Mr. Kroc, there you can see it, the R-A-K. 80 years old at the time of his death. His wife Joan running the ball club. the night that he got on the public address system and said it's the worst baseball I've ever seen. They've come a long way from that night, Joe. I tell you, he is, he was some fan and some man. I sat with him a couple times coming out here. Yes, it is a tragedy he's not here. You see it. Two and two. Fly ball to straightaway center. Lemon started back. Now comes up. So one away. We showed that R.A.K. on the sleeve of Jack Kroll, the coach's first base. Jack Kroll is very seldom in the coach's box, and sometimes they even make him move back. I said, Jack, why is that? Simply fear. I don't want to get hit. There's no strategy involved. He just doesn't want to get hit. Well, I don't blame him. You stand in that box, and you have somebody like Nettles and Kennedy pulling the ball outside of first base. You're fair game. Here's Wiggins, and again, Castillo is way in on the grass. Wiggins struck out in the first inning. Morris has struck out three. And then he singled back a second base in the third inning. But they left him at third. The outfield split and around the left. Whoa, at the knuckles. That'll make an honest man out of you. Well, they, they pitched to him pretty much like they do to Mickey Rivers. He's right on top of the plate. The, the great speed. They want to take it away from him. They want to crowd him. And Morris is not afraid to come inside. In fact, you're looking at a pitch that may be obsolete. High and inside fastball. All of a sudden, it's a grievance or it's a brawl, which is ridiculous. And, of course, when you think of San Diego, you think of Atlanta this year. That's right. They had themselves quite a brouhaha. So, Berenguer... We are assuming is just getting a little work after Rosema was throwing all through the fourth inning. One and two the count. Allen Wiggins. One out fifth inning. Three two Detroit. Two and two. Castillo just doesn't think he's, he's, he's not going to give him any room. He doesn't think that he's uh, up to do anything except bunt. Well, we'll see Castillo playing up, and if we get into a bunt situation for Detroit, we'll see Wiggins playing up. Two and two. stealing 120 bases in one season. That's what this kid did in the low minors. So you know he can fly. Jack McKeon saw him when he went to scout a pitcher. Jack was out trying to get ball players from everywhere, and he, he saw Wiggins, and they, he said he's available for draft, and he drafted him. From the neighborly Los Angeles Dodgers. Two and two. And there's a line drive flag by Lou Whitaker.
Ricky says it, but I'm going to tell you something. Down the middle, he's very strong with Parrish, Whitaker, Trammell, and Lemon. There's Whitaker making a great play. Another gold glove performance by Whitaker. Of course, Whitaker and Trammell have been together since 1978. So there's a considerable amount of teamwork between those two. And here's Tony Gwynn, fly to right and walk. And he bangs it up the middle, base hit. And with two out, the time run is aboard, and the batter is Steve Garvey. Young Gwynn is an amazing hitter. When you talk to the hitting coach, he says he has no zones. He doesn't anticipate. He sees the ball, and he puts it in play. You know, you were talking about worrying about being hit. When he was at Walla Walla, Bobby Tolan would almost kneel in front of him and flip the ball up, and he would drill it, trying to teach him to get the head of the bat out in front. And people were worried that Tolan would get killed by Gwynn. But Bobby said, oh, I've been hit, but he's worth it. And he's got himself a National League batting champ. He also runs well. He has stolen 33, so we keep an eye on him with two outs. You saw Parrish check the bench. We mentioned it before. Craig calls all pitch outs, Roger Craig, and there he goes checking again, and he also calls for throws by the pitcher to throw to first base. There you see him next to Billy Consolo. 1-0. Gwynn held on by Darrell Evans, a short lead. And he increased it, and immediately Mars went over there. Garvey at first, he singled and grounded into a double play. One ball, no strikes, and he's off the rubber, and Gwynn retreats. the tying run 3 2 Detroit bottom of the fifth two out one ball and no strikes to Garvey there he goes the pitch is dropped at the plate by Parrish it was high and inside and Lance just dropped it stolen base for Gwynn you could see that Parrish was trying to handle that pitch and get in position he just doesn't get it. Hits the heel of the glove and forget it. Gwynn, average jump, good speed though, and he's looking back to see if Garvey took a whack at it. It was not a straight steal. Well, Garvey trying to pick him up and tie up the game. High slider, ball three. And on deck, Greg Nettles. And look at him take a look. He wants to hit three and all. Will they give him the green light?
city of San Diego justly proud of Jack Murphy Stadium and we're going along into the sixth inning with the Tigers having turned it around and taken a three to two lead thanks to the two run home run by Larry Herndon in the fifth inning down on the ground Andy Hawkins has taken over for Mark Thurman. So Thurman five innings allowed three runs seven hits walked three and struck out two and what kind of a pitcher are we looking at Joe? He's got a good fastball a hard slider he's trying to work on his change of pace uh, part of his problem he's a nibbler and he gets behind the hitters and they say with his stuff he should never get behind in the dirt all the way to the backstop ball one in fact in his two appearances against the Cubs as he works on Chet Lemon the Padres were saying he got what he really needed a boost in confidence that's line to left and Martinez coming over to play it on a hop lemon a big turn and holding as it comes into Templeton so with that batting glove hanging out of the pocket lemon walks up and singles to left saying hello to Hawkins and that'll bring up Darrell Evans Evans lost a hit on a fine play by Alan Wiggins in the second inning grounded out to Wiggins in the fourth 0 for two this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. So we'll keep an eye on Lemon now. And so will Hawkins. Lemon's a break even base dealer. He's stolen five and he's been caught five. But Garvey on the bag, so that gives Evans a hole on the right side. Notice about these players how they bear down on the coaches. Sparky will put a play on at any time from any base. The base runners are always looking. Look at him bearing down, looking, and Evans checking. That reflex action, grabbing your head to make sure you don't take one on the helmet. Oh, and one. Were you on that pirate ball club that first wore helmets? We were the first club. Yeah, we were the right. experimental club because they, they laughed at us. They, they said, said you were soapbox derby. Yeah, why, why would anybody throw a 209 at team average, you know? Now I know guys who wear helmets playing the outfield, and for good reason. They should. <laughs> Down and in, ball two, two and one. Well, if you're going to run him, here it is. Pitcher's delight, two balls and one strike. And look at Evans. He wants to know, is he gone? You've got to be alive. 3-2 Detroit, top of the sixth. And Hawkins keeping an eye on Lemon. Lemon afraid he's going to get hit in the head. And that's hit and back. so-called 10th man when we're in San Diego and we'll see and hear from the 10th man at Tiger Stadium over the weekend. Greg Nettles. He'll be followed by Terry Kennedy and Bobby Brown. Nettles so far single to left and walk. He scored a run on Terry Kennedy's double in the first inning. 
Three two Tigers. Bottom of the six. Change and it's hit off the end of the bat and it's a base hit to center. So Morris makes a great pitch. Nettles is way out in front of it and gets a hit. That's exactly what they wanted to do. He's even laughing himself saying I must have hit that with a wet sporting news. It just kind of died out there. Didn't even bend the grass when it landed. He's a dead high fastball hitter. They want to push him breaking stuff and off speed. But hey when you're swinging that bat you get those. There's no such thing as a cheap hit. It is a hit. Well Terry Kennedy had the double to drive in two in the first inning. Wide to center in the third. And the first question is will Evans hold the runner. And I think he told Morris he's coming off the bag. And he is. So Nettles at first. The tying run. It's 3-2 Detroit. Bottom of the sixth. you wonder during the regular year Kennedy did not sacrifice even once now the chances are very slim he'd be bunting now naturally he has the power to take you out Shearer and Lopez throwing now in the Detroit bullpen that's hit foul down the left field line out of play hit it inside out 0 and 2 so he had seen action down there Rosema and Berenguer and Bear but now that it really means something they have Aurelio Lopez and Bill Shearer, the left hander. Roger Craig, eyeballing Jack Morris's every move. 0 and 2 to Terry Kennedy. And it's lined in the center, base hit. Nettles to second and just did get there as Lemon almost had a force play. on the bench, Ben. Ozzy Virgil really is the one who called time and ran Salazar. around Salazar. That's who it is. He'll run for Nettles. Luis can play third base and center field. He's got a great arm. You've got a fun situation and Parrish likes to throw. Salazar got to be careful because Parrish not afraid to throw. He kind of lean a little bit. He'll pick you right off. Salazar had a sore leg yesterday during the workout. He hurt it during the league championship series with the Cubs, but evidently he's sound enough now. The Tigers bring up the corners. Both Evans and Castillo are up, and a bluff at second base just to keep Salazar anchored at the bag. 3 2 Detroit. Nobody out. Salazar at second, the tying run. Kennedy, the potential go ahead run at first. Brown, Martinez, and Templeton do up. Time call. Castillo wants to talk to Mars. But he wants to know just how far over he's going to break. They're going to try to set it up because Brown's job is to punt the ball down the third base line. And the last thing you want to do is have confusion to where you get the bases loaded. And remember earlier we were talking about Sparky's high regard for Jack Mars and his quickness coming off the mound, comparing it to left-handed Don Gullett. Now there's Evans moving up. Kennedy and Salazar taking their lead. A pickoff play, no good to Whitaker. What happens there is the shortstop breaks to cover the first time, and when the shortstop goes towards third, it's a sucker play. They go to the second baseman. Salazar is back. You practice that play in spring training. I've never been a big advocate of fancy plays in game situations. I still like three outs make the play you get those fancy plays you end up with a big L in the scoring column. I like that kind of a 
play, especially against a pinch runner who's coming into the game cold. And he's looking at ball one. I like that kind of play on the playground. I don't like okay. it in the first game of the World Series. All right. I guess I'm a purist or a basics guy because if one thing goes wrong, you got a fire drill on your hands, and pretty soon you've got a big rally going, and the other club hasn't done that much to make the rally. You have. What's going on is, on a bunt, Whitaker figures to break to cover first, and Trammell figures to break to cover third, and that lulls the runner into thinking, well, I'll just follow the shortstop. But after they set him up, Whitaker would then fake going to first and circle back, and all of a sudden they've hung you out to dry, and Sparky has used that play for years. Sparky coached here in San Diego in 1969, and now they're on their feet here in Jack Murphy Stadium. took the bunt off if it was ever on. One and one. Remember what we talked about earlier? Carmelo Martinez is the best fly ball hitter on the team. That's what would make a sacrifice bunt here. So very, very interesting. One and two. It's an interesting thought. You ever think that a fellow's a better bunter right-handed than left-handed? You wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think so. No. He just missed that ball. He had a good ball to bunt. They teach bunting it's, it's catching the baseball with the bat. Well, with two strikes, the Tigers feel he will not be bunting. And he fouled it away. Three runs, eight hits for the Tigers. Two runs, seven hits, and an error for the Padres. Padres have Salazar running for Nettles at second, Kennedy at first, and Dick Williams on his feet in the dugout, and Sparky chewing away. One and two. Two and two. I'll tell you one thing, the Padres sorely missed Kevin McReynolds. I don't care how good a series Bobby Brown has. McReynolds, 25 years old, is a franchise player, and he broke a bone in his wrist against Chicago. But, of course, Williams points out he won back in 72 without Reggie Jackson. But it wasn't easy. Never is. Two and two. Got him. Perfect fastball about at the knees and the outside part. Brown never did get a good swing. So the lack of the sacrifice gives Morris a chance for his fourth strikeout. And it'll bring up Carmelo Martinez, but the fly ball won't mean anything. I'd love to know how fast that was because from up here, it looked like the hardest ball he has thrown. He had it in a good spot. He just overpowered him. He blew him away. But Martinez rounded a short and struck out. Over two. They'll try to jam him with the fastball if they have to throw the fastball. They consider him a fastball hitter. They'll try to rely on the breaking ball, but if they throw the fastball, it should be in. Ball one. He's opened up a little bit. Parrish will tell us where he wants it. Watch the way he leans. Detroit. One out in the sixth inning. Salazar at second. Kennedy at first. Martinez at the plate and Templeton to follow. Fouled away. And he jammed him high and tight. He really went after him. Trey, that's a very effective pitch. You, you, the pitchers will take the two alleys. I mean, the lanes, the outside and the inside lanes. They one any part of the middle. That's where the good pitchers pitch. That's what Dan Quisenberry says. He says the middle of the plate is where offensive history is made. Exactly. One and one. Two and one. A good backhanded save by Parrish. He had to go across his body to get that.
Lazar at second, Kennedy at first. Pop foul behind the plate and out of play. Dick Williams was trying to needle his own fans earlier this year when he referred to them as a, a nice laid back little Navy town. Uh, he has done his job. It doesn't sound laid back or little by any means. Well, he's a blunt guy. So is Jack McKeon. Jack McKeon says so the fans weren't cheering. What did they have to cheer about before this year? Good point. Two and two to Martinez. Got him. So Jack Morris, one of the great pitchers in the American League, shows you why. With first and second and nobody out, he punches out Brown and Martinez. He let up on this curveball, and look at the concentration. It's a split-finger fastball. You can see the grip. Great. Look at the tumble effect. And so it's Gary Templin, who wears number one on his back, and he's on the spot right now. First ball hitter. He hit the first pitch last time up and hits one now. Foul. Oh, and one. He's up there hacking. He struck out in the second. All five strikeouts for Jack Mars have been swinging. Templeton hit the first pitch in the fourth inning and grounded to short. They like to come hard inside. He likes to get those arms out and go to the opposite field. Hard stuff inside is where they'd like to go. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, it's a great opening act. Oh. They're playing the way they got here, and that's the way it should be. And right away, after striking out Brown and Martinez, he has it 0-2 to Gary Templeton. And I would think the biggest pitching that he has made tonight was when he thwarted Brown's effort to sacrifice. Has called his catcher out a couple times, and and I particularly like to see that because the pitcher has the ball, he has to throw it, and he's telling Lance Parrish, "Here's what I want to do. It's not here's what I have a hunch to do. Here's what I'd like to do. Here's what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do." So Jack Morris striking out Brown and Martinez is one pitch away from striking out the side. Those hope pitchers. I like guys like this. Hope pitchers. I hope I get it in the major leagues this year. Leading here in San Diego, 3-2. One and two. Out away. So it's still one and two. You know, in watching Kennedy give out the signs, there are a lot of ways for a catcher to communicate with a pitcher. What about outside signs? Working with your mask and your chest protector and your shin guards rather than pumping your fingers. He, I asked him about that because some catchers like it. Uh, he doesn't like it, and uh, sometimes you use it to change your signs. And uh, he says, when I want to change them, I go out and tell him. One and two. Roy Campanello, when he was catching for the Dodgers, said because of his dark fingers, some pitchers couldn't see his sign. So he worked with outside sign. People in the stands would watch him, and he, they would ask him, are you a Catholic? Are you blessing yourself? <laughs> <laughs> he was given signs. Two and two. Well, what you do sometimes is, let's say you put that one, two, three, and the first sign counts, but you make it up with your pitcher. If I touch my mask, the last sign counts. Yeah, right. That kind of thing. Two balls and two strikes, and the battle goes on. Hit in the air to right field. Gwynn fading, not to the track, however, just short of it. Three quarters of the way is Whitaker drawing a throw, which is a daring but a very sound play, making Gwynn throw and the possibility of making him throw it away. But as we said, everything Gwynn does is a tribute to Bobby Tolan. You can see Whitaker watching. Now he hustles back, and uh, he makes him throw, but he gets back in plenty of time. And it was a pretty high throw. You see it sailing. Garvey had to go up a little bit to get it. And with one out, and Whitaker at first, here is Kirk Gibson. 
Lied to left in the first inning, struck out in the third, and walked in the fifth inning and was picked off. That preceded the double by Parrish. But it was forgotten when Herndon hit the home run. Pitch out. No action. Whitaker holding. Interesting time for him to call that. And I specifically uh, went to him yesterday to ask him about that. He didn't particularly like to call pitch outs. Yeah, but I'm sure he saw something that indicated, hey, something's happening. One and all. Two balls and no strikes. On deck, Lance Parrott. That's a line score. Three runs, eight hits for Detroit. Two runs, seven hits, and an error for San Diego. It did not figure in the scoring. Big Lance on deck. Fouled away. They have an expression in baseball about waiting on a pitch, which is grammatically incorrect, but that's exactly what Gibson did. Boy, did he wait on that ball. That's why it went off to the left. He waited so long, it was almost in Kennedy's mitt. When you can do that, it makes you a better hitter. The longer you can wait, obviously, the better look you get at. You get at the ball. Keep that bat back. Musial was great at that. Musial was great at everything. Two and one. <laughs> every, time, every time he'd slide, I'd expect to see oil come out of second base. I love the way he was great at everything. <laughs> he is. Andy Hawkins picking up for starter Mark Thurman. Two balls, one strike. Two and two. He came in on him and down, and Gibson can hit that ball, but not that time. As you said earlier, it was a case of confidence with Hawkins as we look at the uh, bullpen as they're looking on, and he's throwing with a lot of confidence, and he's got a good live arm. Two balls and two strikes to Kirk Gibson. Whitaker at first, one out, seventh inning, 3-2 Detroit. Oh! Just got back, and Garvey thought he had him. Gave him a little push. He may have just helped him off a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Little toe dance, a la Lou Whitaker. He went in with the left foot. Now Garvey gives him a little push with those Popeye arms, and he was changing feet. Yeah. What a time to go for a dance lesson. And Larry Barnett of the American League right there to call him safe. Two and two. On the hands and pop. He says he'll take it. And he does. You can see that Whitaker was losing his balance here. He goes in with the left foot. Now he's going to change. And he, wow. if he tagged him, you can't see the glove is behind him. It looks like a break dance. I'm telling you something. Of course, we got a replay. I'd have called him out. Yeah. Well, we'll see just how big that play is now. Lance Parrish had an infield single in the first inning, walked in the third, doubled with two out in the fifth inning, and then rode home on Herndon's home run. So Whitaker calls safe, doing a buck and wing over there, and Parrish is giving the at bat. Three to two Detroit, top of the seventh. A third down the line, a trio of Padres, and it's Martinez. Carmelo makes the play. So they leave Whitaker. That's seven left by Detroit. And at the end of six and a half, Tigers three. Feet pitched by Hawkins. Look at his grip. He's got three fingers on there. He's got arm, a fastball arm speed, but look at the rotation. There is none. You can see the seam all the way. Much like a palm ball. Well, you can see the numbers for Jack Morris. He has not had to labor too hard. However, in the last inning, remember, he had given up two hits to the first two batters and then proceeded to strike out the side. And we'll see whether that took a little something extra out of him or not. Kurt Bavacqua will start it off bottom of the seventh inning. That's a strike. Bavacqua flied to left, flied to center. He was given a nod as the D.H. over Champ Summers, even though Champ is a left-handed batter. Change. Straight change, one ball, one strike. 
Morris likes to start what he uh, finish what he starts, but down in the uh, bullpen, they've got the franchise down there. There you see Shear and Lopez. And if they really need the left-handed ace, of course, that's Willie Hernandez. Well, that's what I'm referring to, not those two. One and one. Fouled away down the line out of play. Every guy had an MVP year it would be Hernandez. I was interested in the quote in the papers attributed to Davy Johnson of the Mets, and he wasn't putting a knock on Willie, but he said, I'm really shocked because I thought he was just an average pitcher in the National League. Well, maybe he was. But he has been absolutely incredible huh? in Detroit. One and two to Bavacqua. Two and two. Detroit's pitching was magnificent in the Royals series. I mean, they just shut him down. And there's part of the staff. And Willie, of course, front and center. I can't imagine Sparky going to the two or warming up. Two and two. Fastball is hit inside first and down the line. Bavacqua is on his way for two. Gibson chasing him. He rounded second base, and what a play that was! Nine, four, five, from Gibson to Whitaker to Castillo, right there. That's where he lost it, and that's where he lost the play. Virgil says get down, but basic baseball, hitting the relay man, made the play. And I will say, Virgil was waving him to third. As you see, Gibson almost fall down in the bullpen. Here's the play, that throw by Whitaker. Hitting the cutoff man. And that made it. Basic baseball. Cutoff man. Hit him. So there's a gamble by Ossie Virgil. He had his leadoff man with a sense double, pressed his luck, and it cost him. And with one out, here is Alan Wigan. Castillo creeping in, ball one. The so Bavacqua. As we said, only had a few at-bats all year. You know he didn't have a chance to go from home to third. And threw a shoe on the far turn, and it cost him. Fisted back a third, slicing foul. Herndon can't get it. And there's no way that Virgil would know that he was going to throw that shoe. As he rounds second base, he's coming full tilt right here. Now you see him start to leak the oil right there, and there goes the wheel, and he recovers his balance. Down, says Virgil. A man of Novena wouldn't help him on that play once he stumbled. So the Padres get burned on the gamble. One and one to count to Wigan. And he's going to drag. And Morris tags him out. Remember, we were talking about Sparky's regard, how quick Jack Morris is. Quicker than Gullet, he said, and we couldn't believe him. Now you get an idea. He gets off the mound in good shape, and he knows exactly what he has to do and makes the tag. In this inning right here, you saw two plays of why the Tigers are where they are that hasn't been getting much publicity, and that is the basic baseball. Hitting the cutoff man, feeling your position. It's easy to win when you get the home runs and the Hernandez and what have you. As we look at Babacco, who still can't understand it, but you saw two pretty good plays in this inning by the Tigers. Now here's Tony Gwynn, fly to right, walk, single, and stole a base. In fact, the last three innings, there have been cracks in Morris's armor, and one way or another, he's been able to regroup. They left Gwynn at second base in the fifth inning. They had runners at first and second, and nobody out in the sixth inning, and Brown was unable to bunt. Bavacqua is burned, trying to stretch a double into a triple, and Wiggins out on the tag play. So the Padres spinning their wheels in the last couple of innings. One and all. Oh. All two. The good pitcher, the thoroughbred, he wants to finish it. He smells the victory, and Jack Morris, if he indeed needed the blowout patch, he's applied it himself. In the sixth inning, he struck out the side, and here in the seventh inning, he makes the good play on Wiggins. And Jack completed about 25% of his starts this year, which is a miracle when you have Hernandez and Lopez in the bullpen and a manager who figures that seven innings is really the bottom line. And who has the reputation of Captain Hook. I mean, in Cincinnati, if you had bad breath, you came out. Gone. Parrish 
wants to find out how he feels, how's he going. There's no strategy here. Letting him catch a breather. Come on, battle it through. The big thing for Mars, he has only walked two batters, and both of them came back in the third inning. So he is doing anything but beat himself. He is not walking people, and he's getting the defensive support he needs. 2 and 0 the count to Tony Gwynn. Two down, seventh inning, 3 2 Detroit. In talking about tonight's game, yesterday he said, if they're going to beat me, they're going to beat me with the bats, not with the legs. I'm not going to walk people. Uh, he's done that. Here's 3 and 0. Strike. Ah! Gwynn hitting in the number two slot is followed by Steve Garvey. I mean, Dick Williams, you can't take anything for granted, that's for sure. But the one thing you don't want to do is run yourself out of the inning with a guy like Garvey up there who's had the hot hand. Uh, we'll watch Gwynn held on by Evans. And you can bet Morris is watching him. Gwynn stole second in the fifth inning when Lance Parrish dropped a pitch. the kind of when they throw it you can feel the pressure on your shoestrings as your body starts to leave the shoes look at this it's the split finger and he's way out in front they'll try to make him with two strikes now at the breaking pitch outside part maybe even bounce it fastball hard inside but with two strikes they got the chance to break the curveball but you got the guy on first oh and two Quinn goes on a pitch out and Parrish to Whitaker. They hang him out to How drive. do you like that? Roger Craig, you got to give him a lot of credit. Two strikes. He calls the pitch outs. He called that one. I tell you, amazing. A very expensive inning for the Padres who have a man thrown out at second and a man burned at third. And at the end of seven, 3 2 Detroit in the first inning. Hit into a force play in the third and then hit the home run with Parrish aboard in the fifth inning. Oh, a little smoke on that. Oh, oh. heat. The modern ball player talks about a pitcher bringing it. That one was just brought. Old Diz would say he brung that one. <laughs> <laughs> Old Diz. You know, it's funny you should mention his name, Dizzy Dean. Tonight is an anniversary in baseball history about Diz and Detroit. It was on this day 50 years ago that Dizzy Dean Shut out Detroit 11 nothing and the Cardinals won the World Series. 34 World Series yeah. guest house game. That's something. Two and two. Three runs, eight hits for Detroit. Two runs, eight hits for the Padres. See how 
Hawkins hesitates before he brings that right arm around. It's as if he gathers and regroups while in the middle of his delivery. Full count, Larry Herndon. Fouled away. Here's the big offensive play tonight. It was in the fifth inning with two out and Parrish at second base. It was two to one San Diego and Herndon went the other way and it cleared the eight foot high wall and it went upstairs above the concrete and that turned it around. The Padres have yet to recover from it. Larry of course broke in in the National League with the San Francisco Giants. And he lost him. So Herndon walks to open up matters in the eighth inning. The first pass given up by Hawkins. And it'll bring up Garvey. In fact, in looking back, he also walked Whitaker in the seventh. So that's his second walk. Alex Graham is talking to Garvey, who has hit into a force play, grounded out, and struck out. Garvey, remember, had the bat sawed off in his hands back in the fifth inning. Salazar huddling with Kennedy and with Hawkins. There he is. There he That's is. the guy you expected the franchise get that seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and he's up. By the way, in the bottom of this eighth inning, Garvey, Salazar, and then Kennedy, the left-hand hitter. Bay will be followed by Lemon and Evans. And Drabecki now gets up in the San Diego bullpen. Bunch foul out of play. If you thought that was a bad bunt, we just pass along the note. He did not sacrifice this year. He's trying to move Herndon up a notch. It's going to be tough to sacrifice tonight if he keeps stabbing at it like that. Uh, his, his bat really was not in a good bunting position. Salazar coming in on the grass. Garvey has to hold a corner on Herndon. 3-2 Detroit in the eighth. Foul back. It's pretty tough to ask a man to do something in the World Series that he yet to do during the regular season. The bottom hand, the left hand, should control the angle of the bat. He didn't have that bat level at all. He had it at an angle to begin with, and it was almost like he was stabbing, like it was a sword. 0-2 to Barbaro Garbay. Whoop. One and two. The lack of the bunt is a big play that has haunted San Diego in the sixth inning when Bobby Brown who had two sacrifices as a right-handed batter, couldn't bunt left-handed. That was a big play. Little nubber off the bare hands down to Templeton, who throws and gets him. Gary with that fine arm. And down to second goes Herndon. So Barbe got his man over anyway. And since it touched Hawkins' fingertips, he'll get an assist. It's 1-6-3. Templeton made it in by a couple of steps. It looked like it was going to be a tough play, maybe even a base hit, but uh, Templeton was there and deflected by Hawkins. He did get a piece of it. There you see it. I mean, nonchalant, but with that arm, he oh, just guns him. What an arm. So Herndon at second with one out, and Chet Lemon trying to pick him up. Lemon is one for three. Lemon grounded to third. Then he hit the fly ball in the fourth inning that fooled Martinez. It went for a two base error. And his last time up in the sixth inning, he singled, but he was doubled up on the looper by Evans that was one handed by Garvey. We're in the eighth inning. Detroit three, Padres two. Game one, it's a dandy. One. 
Good save by Kennedy. Boy, you can see why the San Diego uh, coaching staff and the manager like this kid Hawkins. He's got a good live arm. One and one. High fly ball to straightaway center to Bobby Brown. Going back to the bag is Herndon, and he'll hold. And Brown gets the ball back into Templeton. was robbed of a hit by Alan Wiggins in the second inning, rolled out to Wiggins in the fourth, and then hit the ball at the end of the bat, and Garvey was able to leap in the air and backhand it and turn it into a double play, and they're going to take the bat right out of his hands. So Evans, with any luck at all, would be two for three tonight. Instead, he is 0 for three with this walk. A lot of people say they should eliminate this and speed up baseball. I completely disagree. I've seen some fairly weird things as Johnny Grubb has come out as the pinch hitter. And they're intentionally walking someone. I've seen fellas hit it. And remember Dick Williams pulled it on Sparky Anderson on the 3-2 count to Johnny Bench when yes. he was batting. And he walked out there as if to say put him on. And Tennis got out there, put his hand out there at the last minute. Fingers threw a strike and Bench was out. And he was surprised. Sparky was surprised. But Cincinnati won the game. One to nothing. True. Well, here's Johnny Grubb. You talk about somebody coming home. You know, John was an all-star for the Padres in 1974. In fact, prior to Tony Gwynn's big year, he had the best hitting average for a left-hand batter in Padre history. And since he's coming up, Dravecki will be coming in. Grubb hit 311 for the Padres, and he's not going to play. So we got time. We'll be back right after this. They're going to hit for Johnny Grubb. Is Andy Hawkins who worked two and two third innings and he's annoyed basically over one thing in a tough one run game he walked the leadoff man Larry Herndon so two outs later after walking Evans he comes out Dave Dravecki is now picking up and running at first is Dave Bergman for Darrell Evans meanwhile Tom Brookins will bat for Johnny Grove Bergman is a marvelous defensive first baseman. So in a one-run game, I think Sparky would have made the move anyway. And now he gets a maximum out of the move by putting him in as a runner. Here is Brookins. He had a twin brother who played for Detroit in 77 and 78. He even had a cousin who pitched for Detroit. So he's, a, he's a tiger all the way. Brookins, a first-round draft choice for Detroit in 75, finds Herndon at second and Bergman at first. Two out, 3-2 Detroit in the eighth. Fouled away, one and one. What's your book on Dravecki? Dravecki's got as good an arm as you'll want to look at. He'll come at you. He's got a big, hard fastball, hard slider. And he's another one of those three guys that have just kept the San Diego club going, the middle relief men. And that's it, looping to right center, but Gwynn is there. So with the wheeling and the dealing, Williams brings in Dravecki to get Brookins a hit for Grubb, and at the end of seven and a half, 3-2 Detroit. The bottom of the eighth inning in game one of the World Series, Dave Bergman, who ran for Darrell Evans, stays in at first base. Tom Brookins, who batted for Johnny Grubb, who was going to bat for Castillo. Tommy takes over at third. And with a little music from Zorba the Greek, this crowd is on its feet, and it'll be a noisy bottom half with Garvey, Salazar, and Kennedy. Garvey singled in the first, scored a run, grounded into a double play in the third, and grounded out in the fifth. And Jack Morris, who has been bobbing and weaving the last three innings and doing a remarkable job, set sails into the eighth inning, leading three to two. I don't know how you 
you hit that pitch. You don't, and most of the times it's not in the strike zone. The key is, you hear Roger Craig talk about it, is the speed of the arm. It's a fastball uh, mentality that you have when you throw it. On one. Fouled away, so immediately Garvey in a hole, 0-2. With two strikes, they bounce that ball or stay with the fastball inside. But in the spot like this, you throw that 55-foot curveball. And as all curveballs, you want to get it down. And if you miss, you want to beat the outside part of the plate. Let's see how they go. 0-2. Morris has struck out five, walked three. He just went to Old Reliable and blew him away. the split finger look how far he's got him split this time that's the best look we've had at it there's that tumbling and it's just awesome when he throws it Perry said that there were days that he threw that thing it was just unhittable Garvey way over it it just ducked under that bat so one in doubt Jack goes to the split finger he has struck out seven all swinging and here is Salazar who came into the game as a runner in the sixth inning for Greg Nettles if you aren't with us in the sixth inning Nettles and Kennedy opened up with singles Brown couldn't bunt and Morris proceeded to strike out the side in the seventh inning Lavacqua was thrown out when he stumbled rounding second tried to make it for three and came up empty. Boy, he smells it now he's coming down he's coming down the stretch and he's coming down hard Morris is. Oh and two the count. When he pitched his no hitter it was our first game of the week he struck out eight he is seven tonight ground ball to third Tommy Brookins gets his feet wet defensively so two down in the eighth inning tomorrow night game two Dan Petrie 18 and eight and Ed Whitson 14 and eight 8 p.m. Eastern time Game two. Boy, we're a long way from finishing game one. Here's Kennedy. Doubled and took third on the throw in the first inning, and they left him. But he knocked in two. Flied to center in the third with runners at first and third, and singled in the sixth inning. Strike. So Terry is two for three. Two RBIs. Last year, the top hitting catcher in the National League, willing the Silver Slugger Award. Foul back, 0 and 2. He hasn't thrown anything but strikes this inning. And it shows you that it's like some managers say, I don't need starters, I need finishers. I'm not looking for throwers, I'm looking for pitchers. And that's what you're seeing right here. He smells the victory and he's coming down hard. Morris walked two in the third inning, did not walk another man until Gwynn in the seventh. And Gwynn was thrown out stealing, remember, on the pitch out. 0 oh and 2. Check swing foul. Well, now, give me a Cabbage Patch doll and give him one of the World Series that I'm in heaven. There are a lot of little ones up late tonight in San Diego and probably in Detroit. Oh and 2, the count to Terry Kennedy. Wouldn't bite. One and two. Well, Sparky Anderson said it early this year. I don't have to talk anymore, he said. This team will talk for me. <laughs> Boy, has it ever. Yeah, but that's not like Sparky. Sparky, as recently as yesterday, said, man, I could step on 50 nails and never get locked, y'all. <laughs> oh, Sparker. <laughs> One and two to Terry Kennedy. Three, two Tigers, bottom of the eighth. Two out. Ground foul. What was it one of the writers wrote about Sparky's speech? Milt Richmond. He said he's got a speech impediment. Every once in a while he comes up for a breath. <laughs> Steve Garvey isn't saying very much right now, having struck out, opening up the eighth inning. One and two to Terry Kennedy. Tigers scored one in the first. The Padres got two. Herndon hit a two-run home run in the fifth. And no one's made a 
sound since. And there goes Terry, and that's eight strikeouts for Jack Mars. His high for the year, 10 against California. He is something. At the end of eight, three to Detroit. Once again, that great shot. You can see those fingers spread. You can't see it in the batter's box, and that's where it's most important. And here are the stats. Strikeouts eight, but he has struck out five since the sixth. So coming down the stretch, he's really gone to the whip. You remember, Jack struck out the side in the sixth inning, and we we're wondering if that took anything out of him as he sits with Kirk Gibson. He's behind Kirk. And in the seventh inning, after having struck out the side in the sixth, that's when Bavakwa hooked the ball down and was thrown out going to third. That's the biggest single play now as we get down to the ninth inning. And Lou Whitaker, ball one. Whitaker is double, flied to left, flied to center, and walked. Made a very good tag play with the runners going on the ground ball by Garvey and turned it into a double play in the third inning. And he made a magnificent throw getting Bavakwa trying to stretch after receiving the throw from Gibson. I would assume, I'm only guessing, that Whitaker's going to be the cutoff man in almost every instance out oh, yeah. there. Sure. Especially if Alan Trammell's arm is bothering him at all because Whitaker has a fine arm. You really don't go textbook where shortstop left field and second baseman right field. Fouled away in the count two and two. You go to the gun. Who's got the best arm? We're in the ninth. Three runs, eight hits for Detroit. Two runs, eight hits for the Padres. And Detroit, the Tigers hit more home runs on the road than they did at Tiger Stadium. And sure enough, it's the difference tonight on the road. They led the majors in home runs, and Dick Williams and Norm Sherry saw Herndon hit the big one tonight. Whitaker, down he goes. When the Padres come up in the bottom of the ninth, they are due to send up Bobby Brown, Carmelo Martinez, and Gary Templeton. Available on the bench, left-hand batters, Tim Flannery, Champ Summers, and the switch hitting Ron Renneke, who is filling in for the injured Kevin McReynolds. All one. I think if there's one big difference, the thing that will really hurt the Padres is the loss of McReynolds. Two and all the count. Trammell single to left in the first inning in the third inning and then twice went the other way and slide to right. They certainly will lose some power with him. Forget his stats that home run he hit against the Cubs. He, bro he said he broke his bat and he hit it in the seats. Can you imagine? Well he hit 20 and Jack McKeon calls him the franchise. But Doug Harvey was behind the plate says he's got the most powerful easiest swing since Ernie Banks. Yep. That's a little looper hit right at Wigan. Two down. Hey, you gotta like Dravecki too. He's one of those determined young guys, and he just comes in there. In fact, Harry Dunlop was telling me they told him in a bullpen, you must have been a cheerleader when you were in school, because he's cheering and he's talking to everybody, talks to himself. Well, he's gonna try and make Kirk Gibson talk to himself. Kirk has flied to left and struck out, walked in the fifth inning and was picked off, and popped up in the seventh. So the big guy's 0 for three. Dravecki dropping his arm, little sidearm to Gibson. One and all. One and one. Sparky said he had a lot of trouble coming here to San Diego, even with the big red machine. So he knows they're tough here. Ground ball to the left side. Templeton. Low to Garvey in time. So Drabecki sets him down, and all of San Diego now awaits the bottom of the ninth inning. 3-2 Detroit. That is the more than just formidable task faced by the San Diego Padres. Is that an incredible stat? Well, they don't care here. I'm sure Bobby Brown isn't aware of it. Followed by Martinez and Templeton. Brookins in on the grass at third. And Brown very late, 0 and 1. It was Brown's inability to bunt in the sixth inning. That was a big play. 
And it was Bavacqua cut down at third, and it was the tag by Morris on Wiggins' bunt. Change. Foul back and out of play. 0 oh and 2. You can almost feel a tempo that Morris has picked up as he's come on here in the late innings. He just wants that ball and come at you. And if he staggers at all in the ninth inning, they get the big guy ready in the bullpen. There's Willie Hernandez. 0 oh and 2 to Bobby Brown. has had his share of trouble. The Padres have put him through the ringer, but he has been equal to the occasion. Half swing, and Brown is burned out. Nine strikeouts for Jack Morris. And Doug Harvey behind the plate didn't hesitate. That right hand went right up. Uh, looked like they were going to appeal it, but it looked like it just bottom fell right out of it. One out, Carmelo Martinez the batter, grounded to short and struck out twice. 3 2 Detroit, bottom of the ninth inning. Morris has struck out six of the last ten batters he has faced. Ground ball wide a third. Brookins has it. Over to Bergman, two down in the ninth. Friends, game one of the 1984 World Series has been brought to you by Lowen Brown. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowen Brown. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. And by General Electric. At GE, we bring good things to life. Well, here's the first ball hitter, Gary Templeton, with two out in the ninth inning. Morris has retired the last five in a row. Ball one. Brookins stays in on the grass. On deck, Kurt Bavacqua. Now back one and one. He's got a lot of room in right center field, but the scouting report says that left-handed, he's going to hit that ball to the opposite field. There you see that gap in right center. It's up to Morris to, if he's going to stack him that way to make him hit that way. And Herndon is as deep in left field as he would play a right-hand hitter. One and one. Now back one and two. And what do you think he's going to get here? I'd look oh. for the thing. Yeah. The thing, the split-fingered fastball, it's been dropping right. The bottom has been falling out. And Williams knows time is running out. He's down to his last strike in game one. Morris has made 131 pitches up to here. Two and two. Double checking the count. It's two and two. Two out, ninth inning, base is empty. Tigers three, Padres two. Little ground ball to first. This ought to do it. Bergman to the bag, and the lights go out on game one in San Diego. Jack Morris goes all the way, retires the last six in a row. He was threatened. The Padres had him on the ropes, and he had the ability to get off the ropes, and they couldn't put him away. The key plays again. They left Gwynn at second. They had first and second, and nobody out in the sixth. They couldn't do it, and Bavacqua out at third. And so, this week's NBC Light Beer from Miller player of the game, deservedly so, is Jack Morris. Light Beer from Miller, happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Jack Morris to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. There was room for a lot of heroes, but the number one man was Jack Morris. Key home run by Larry Herndon with a man aboard. And Morris, who won the first game in the playoffs, leads the Tigers to their first victory in game one in the World Series. He was magnificent. He was 
magnificent. He had it. He smelled it coming down the stretch. He went out and he got it. He closed it. But the Tigers played good basic baseball to win it. And those San Diego Padres, they're here because they're a good ball club. And we got a great series coming up, Ben. And how? But Joe Garagiola, Vin Scully, reminding you to join us tomorrow night for Game 2 of the World Series. The Tonight Show coming up with Johnny Carson, except on the West Coast. And until tomorrow, a very pleasant good evening. Guy. Tiger strike early, top of the first, one man on. Alan Trammell hits a base hit to left. Lou Whitaker races around to score. Whitaker had doubled. It's one nothing Tigers. They had four hits for just one run in that inning. Padres come back in their half of the first with two on. Terry Kennedy nails a shot down the right field line. Steve Garvey and Craig Nettles, who had both singles, come in to score. And it's 2-1 as the 40-year-old Nettles crosses the plate. Sparky Anderson a little bit concerned at this time, but the Padre fans, 59,000 plus, going for it. Tigers claw back, top of the fifth with a man on. Larry Herndon goes deep to right. And see it. Two-run homer. Tigers lead 3-2. to two, And that's the way it would end up. 3-2 the final. Herndon, the game-winning two-run homer. Morris got the win. Thurman, the loser. And uh, the Tigers now with a 1-0 lead in the 1984 World Series. And a really gutty performance by Jack Morris. Good pitching performance. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Roger Twago. And I'm Gail Gardner. For all of us here at ESPN, thank you for watching.